quod fugat obtusest et habet sub herudine plumbum. Okay, so we're talking about the second arrow that Cupid shot, the one which makes love run away. Obtusest. It is dull. And what else do we know? Well, it has this direct object, lead, beneath this part of it. Hoc deus in nympha peneide fixit, at illo lysit Apollonias trajecta per asa medullas. Did you notice the hoc and illo contrast here? So again, when you're talking about two different things, hoc is used to refer to the thing that was just recently men mentioned. Illo is a thing that was m mentioned further away in the text. So this arrow, the one that makes you reject love, the god stuck it where? On the nymph, who is the daughter, and this is a patronymic, the Peneide nymph, the daughter related to Peneus. And with that arrow, the other arrow, the one that makes you love people, he wounded, what did he wound? The direct object, the Apollo's marrow, so his bone marrow, because, you know, that's where deep love resides, according to the ancients, in your marrows. He um, stuck his... Apollonian marrow through the pierced bones, because you can't get to the bone marrow unless you go through the actual bone first. Okay, Protinus alter amat, fugit altera nomen amantis. Right away, the one person, Apollo, is in love. The other person flees, what does she flee? The name of a lover. Not interested, guys. Silvarum litebris captivarumque ferarum exuviis gaudens, an optaicae mulia thebes. Okay, let's see. A uh, genitive, ablative, genitive, more genitive, ablative, nominative. Okay, so in the shadows, that's ablative of what? Of the forest. And something about of captured animals. Oh, here's the ablative that goes with this. So we have this genitive phrase modifying that. Notice how we have a nice parallel. Genitive, ablative, genitive, ablative. And then Gaudanes, of course, is referring to something nominative singular, meaning Daphne, which was up here. So Daphne rejoicing in what? In the shadows of the forest and in the trophies or the skins of the animals that she captured or killed to get the skin off. She was rejoicing in these things. And then we have a phrase describing her. Aimula is nominative. So she is a female version, a female rival of whom? Of unmarried Apollo. Notice the funky Greek genitive. Sorry, that's just the way it goes. Okay, keep describing Daphne. Vita co er kebat positos sina lege capillos. Okay, Wita, nominative. This is her headband. What was her headband doing? It was forcing, sitting on, arranging the direct object. The hair placed without law. So, Mult ilam peti eri la versata patentes, impatiens expersque viri nemura via lustrat. Okay, so. Multi, new subject, many people, notice many masculine people, many guys, direct object, ilam, her, peti ere. Notice the syncopated, perfect, it should be peti ewe, peti werent, or peti erent, but they syncopated it here, Ovid has to make that neater. So many guys wanted her, they saw her. She, um, this is from a deponent verb, so having rejected... That, of course, is referring to our subject right there, which is Daphne. Having rejected who? The active participle guys, the guys who were after her. She rejected, having rejected them, she is impatiens. She's not interested. She doesn't suffer them. And she is inexperienced of this genitive because you're inexperienced of a genitive. And inexperienced of guys. Um, direct object here, Nemora Awia, out of the way woods. She um, hangs out in out-of-the-way woods because, you know, she's a tomboy. Who needs guys? Let's keep going. Um, neck, quid hymen, quid amor, quid sint canubia curat. 
Okay, so wait, we've got a question word and a question word and a question word and a subjunctive verb. Well, any diligent Latin student would be like, ding, 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 indirect question. So here's her main verb, correct. Nor does she care what hymen, marriage, what love, and what marriage is. So that's all there. 